Hey everyone, it's David Newman, your software's product manager here at Blue Chip IT, your trusted IT distributor. Finally, we've got it, the 100 series of software switches, the freshest and final piece in the puzzle to your full one vendor, one network and one management console network stack. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the high level comparisons of each of the switch models inside of the 100 series lineup. In the second part of the video is going to be taking a look into the central console and what has in store for us in terms of management of these switches. All the 100 series switches we have in front of us today are layer 2 switches or web managed switches with of course management through the central console as well. We've got the 8 port variants, the 24 port variants and the 48 port variant switches here. We've got a non PoE option at the bottom and a PoE option at the top for each and every single one of them except for the 48 port switches, which have a full PoE option at the, port, the top, uh, sporting a 740 watt power budget. And the middle one is a half PoE option with 410 watts. The bottom, of course, is a non-PoE option. All of the 100 series switches today support PoE and PoE Plus. That's the standard 802.3 AF and AT standards. The only one that supports PoE Plus Plus is the 200 series 8 port switch. In the 100 series switch lineup, in terms of sizing, it's pretty obvious, but the 8 port models are a desktop mount and the 24 and the 48 port models are rack mountable with rack mount ears included and attachable on the side. In terms of SFP ports, we've got two SFP ports on the 8 ports variant and with four SFP plus ports on the side on the 24 and the 48 port variant. In terms of managing the switches, it's really, really easy using Sophos Central, the management console that Sophos provides their entire network infrastructure. There you can also manage your XGS firewalls, your APX access points, for example, and even all of your endpoint licenses such as Intercept X. If you're not looking for that central management experience, you're more than welcome to plug into the COM communications ports on the sides of the 24 and the 48 port models, and you'll be able to manage it locally via CLI, command line interface, SNMP, or even local web management. If you were looking to manage it via central, make sure to purchase the support and services package, which comes separate from the switch unit itself. If you don't purchase that services and support package, the switches will go into Sophos central read-only mode, where you'll be able to see them but not manage them. Of course, it's always worth it to buy the support and services package simply because you get advanced RMA support, firmware updates, and the most efficient management experience you can get with Software Central. In terms of warranty, the software switches all come with limited lifetime warranty, which means you'll get return and replace support for the entire lifetime of these switches. If you have that support and services package though, you get advanced RMA support, which means the Sophos technical team, as soon as they find a fault and issue you an RMA support ticket, will send you a Sophos switch right out of their warehouses. That's it for the model lineup. Let's take a look at the central management console. Adding a switch is nice and simple. It's just a matter of plugging it in, waiting a couple of seconds, putting the serial number in. Once you've registered, it will register. And as you can see here, I've got the uh, eight port switch PoE uh, model. Um, all we need to do now is basically have a quick look at what it looks like um, and basically give you some insight. From here, from the dashboard, you get some really good summary of the model, the MAC address, uh, what ports have been accessed, the connection usage, what PoE injection uh, watts you have. But as, as I said earlier, with the administrator being able to have visibility of all their uh, switches, but also the ability to create and edit uh, VLANs on the fly. But not, not only that, but makes it nice and simple for all, all your administrators when a port is being registered and they want to know which port has access to which, you can modify it like I have done here to show you which, what is plugged in. From here, you can actually look at the flow controls and enable them and update them accordingly. Um, and that will update that in, in milliseconds and give you the ability to diagnose these uh, switches um, immediately if there is any concerns. All these are managed through Sophos Central and over to you, David. So everything we've talked about, about the Sophos switches today, makes the Sophos switches versatile and extremely useful for so many different types of scenarios. You've got small branch offices, you've got uh, small to medium businesses, retail outlets, you name it. 
To choose exactly what type of switch you'll need, make sure you see how many ports you're gonna need and how many devices you're gonna need to power if you need PoE or if you don't need PoE. If you do need PoE, make sure to calculate the power usage of all of your devices, leaving some room for the future. This is the first of a few videos we're gonna be releasing for Sophos, so courtesy of our friends over at Sophos, we've got some Apple AirPods in order to give away. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment on what you think of the latest addition to Synchronized Security, and you could be in the money to win. Remember, if you're a Sophos partner and you're looking for your one-stop Sophos shop, contact sophos at bluechipit.com.au.